Hello friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Alicia and today I'm going through all of the books I read in December. In December I was able to read seven books, the first of which was War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, which actually was a buddy read with David Wiley and I really enjoyed this buddy read and I really enjoyed this book a lot more than I had expected to. So this is a sci-fi book, which I didn't know for some reason. I thought it was just like a classic and I thought it was going to be like what a lot of classics are about, which is like marriage and stuff like that. I don't know why, because it's called The War of the Worlds. I feel like something should have tipped me off. But anyway, I eventually actually read it and I really enjoyed it. I loved buddy reading it with David Wiley. It was really fun to like hear a different perspective on things and he had some thoughts that were things that I hadn't thought about but I was really glad he brought to my attention and just being able to dive more into the story and talk about it was was really nice with this book. I guess it's not entirely fair to say I didn't know this was sci-fi until I started reading it because after hearing about it for a while, I did eventually hear the story of when there was a radio broadcast of this and it's about an alien invasion and the people who heard the radio bar broadcast thought it was a real event that was happening in England. So that's a really interesting story about like the this story. It's like an interesting anecdote about this story and I did really enjoy the story. I enjoyed the character work in this story a lot especially because it almost felt like each individual character was a different type of personality reacting to an extreme situation, but it never felt like overdone or like a trope in any way. So I did enjoy this, like I said, a lot more than I was expecting to, and I'm probably going to pick up more H.G. Wells in the future. The next book I read in December was Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot. This is, of course, the book of poetry that the musical Cats is based on. And I grew up listening to the music from Cats. I love the music from Cats. I have not seen the new movie because I've heard that the new movie is absolutely terrible. So I haven't watched it. But... I've listened to a lot of the Broadway and the London West End music from it, and I've loved the music. So I reread this, especially because Alice read the McCavity poem, I want to say it was. I can't remember exactly right now. It might have been McCavity. And I know David, again, David Wiley, who was my buddy for buddy reading War of the Worlds also mentioned this and read a poem from it, I think towards the beginning of the month. December was kind of a long month, so I'm forgetting exactly um, what poems they read, but I do know both David and Alice talked about this in the month of December, maybe the end of November. I don't remember exact timelines, but anyway, basically, They'd both talked about it recently, so I was like, I'm going to reread that. So I took one Sunday afternoon and just, it's really short, so it just took me not very much time at all. I loved it. Um, I had forgotten that the song Memory is not really in this poetry collection. I think that's one that was just written for it, and that is a song I love very dearly. I love all of them, and I don't even know if I have a favorite poem. But, fun fact, the cat I had growing up was named Jenny Any Dots after one of the poets and poems in here. And then my grandpa had a cat that he called Bustopher Jones because he, the cat would wander around town all the time. So we called him Bustopher Jones. But we all thought, all of the grandkids and kids, thought he should have been called Skimble Shanks because my grandpa, well, my grandparents, when they had this cat, they lived just about two blocks from a railroad. 
<laughs> Sorry if you can hear Brolin. He is wanting to go outside, but he cannot go outside right now. But we thought he, the cat should be called Skimbleshanks. All of them names from this book, it's kind of... It was kind of a tradition, almost, to name your cat something from the cat's musical or from Old Possum's book of practical cats in my family. Next, I read The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And I did a whole Instagram post about this book and I wanted to make it its own separate video, but December kind of got away from me as did the last like four months of the year, so it didn't happen. But I was really disappointed in this book. I tried to prepare myself for that eventuality of I knew it was possible that I would dislike this because I'd heard so many people who had disliked it. When it first came out, I heard nothing but good things. And then as it started getting kind of a broader audience, I started to hear actually a lot of negative things about it. Unfortunately, I fall more on the negative side of things. The start of this book especially feels very much like you can just choose to be happy. And if you have a mental illness, if you just decide to be happy, your mental illness will go away. And that really, really irks me. I hate that that kind of message that often gets spread and that kind of message that I really felt like was especially in the beginning of this book. This book also felt incredibly cheesy. Like, it just felt very fake and very cheesy. So overall, like, it wasn't a terrible, terrible book. I don't think there was ever a point where I wanted to DNF it. But I was really disappointed because this story has the potential to be really good and it just didn't hit any of the things that I think could have made it really good. Also, I should have known because the whole premise of this book is that the main character, I think her name's Nora, I don't remember. I'm gonna say it's Nora. The main character Nora goes to a library and in each book in this library is a different life she could have lived if she'd made a different decision. And it very much plays into the kind of like the alternate reality thing. And I don't like uh, like alternate reality stuff. I hate it. That's like why I, I used to really like the Avengers and it just kind of all fell apart for me because it's just, if you watch the kind of last movies, they just go into a lot of plot conveniences of like, we can write ourselves into this corner because we have infinite universes. And that's kind of what this felt like. It's like just this trope of infinite universes and like, I don't feel like it was explained very well. So another issue, I should have known I wouldn't like it that much because if each book is a different life, I guess originally I thought maybe it would just be like each book is a different potential but not an actual life but it's like each book is an actual different reality and that just doesn't work for me. Isn't that right buddy? Next I read The Office of Historical Corrections by Danielle Evans. I thought this was nonfiction for the longest time. It's not nonfiction and it's very much just a novella and some short stories that are very slice of life and I was disappointed. There was only one story, only one story that I felt resolved in any sort of like pleasing way. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I just don't like slice of life because I haven't read that much slice of life or if I need to know it's slice of life before going in because it took me a couple of stories to realize what was happening and I was deeply unsatisfied with those stories just because like it was so unsatisfying to read the endings especially and none of the stories felt complete like it felt like it cut off in the middle of the story in my opinion in most of these so I don't know if I just don't do the slice of life thing very well 
or what it was about this that disappointed me. I did read a review of this and it was like, if you don't like this book, then I pity your intelligence or something like that. And I was like, well, I guess you can pity me all you want because this book was fine, but it was not what I was hoping it would be. Again, similar to The Midnight Library, I see what the author was trying to do. And I do think for some people was actually really successful in doing what it set out to accomplish. And even in one of the stories that I really, really enjoyed, like that story was very good at doing what it accomp what it wanted to do, uh, at accomplishing that. But overall, as a collection and as a whole, it just didn't really work for me. Next, I read The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. This is another book that I had kind of high expectations about just because I'd heard good things about it and it sounded so good. This is a dual timeline book that surrounds a mystery of what happens to an apothecary in like the 1700s and then in, in like modern day and as there's clues to uncover what happened and what happened to the people who ran it, what happened to the apothecary itself, you know. This apothecary in the 1700s was kind of an underground place where women could go to get remedies for ailments they have, but also for poisons and other things to kill their abusers. This book has a very interesting premise and it probably could have been really good. Like a lot of these books could have been really good. It did really suffer from debut syndrome, I think, because this was the author author's first book. And I think it really shows in that there's a little bit of lack of something, maybe a little bit of lack of depth um, in that I never felt truly like this story went beyond kind of the surface level even though all of the ideas were there to take it farther it just didn't really hit it for me so I'm glad I read this book I am again once again a little bit disappointed which I feel like is kind of a theme for this month also I didn't rate any of the books I read this month apparently but you know that's fine so a little bit disappointing I love the cover though so there's that Next, I read Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, and this was my first Andy Weir book. The first half of it, I was eating it up. I loved it. I was like, give me all of it. And then there's a couple weird things that could have been cut. And then we kind of plateau. And the rest of the book is just like a plateau. So this book is like 400 and something, 470 pages or something like that. It should have been about 450. There's not very many sections that I think should have been cut, but there are a few that definitely should have been cut because they are just so asinine. There are a couple points in here where we kind of take a break from the main story, from the main plot, and we're trying to get some background information, but the way he, he chooses to provide the background information just doesn't make any sense. And it's like, there's a couple times where it was like he just let Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory, like, invade his characters. And I was like, I don't think real astronauts would actually talk like this. I've never met a human who talks like this. I've only seen it on sitcoms. So there are a couple of moments like that. There was also like he tried to touch on a deeper topic of sexism in science and specifically in, in, in STEM fields in, in general. And it just wasn't handled well, honestly, like because he just didn't have the time to do it. And it was one of those things that like, I, again, I see what you're trying to do, but you 
should have just left it out. It didn't, the story didn't need it. The story didn't need this half a paragraph where you're trying to make a commentary about sexism in STEM fields. Like, we know it's there. If you want to write about it, you need more than half a paragraph. Like, there's nothing you can say in half a paragraph that's actually going to be helpful. So that's not what the story is about. Just take it out. That I don't want to get too much deeper into details because I don't want to give spoilers. But there were a couple things and honestly a couple times that I was like, if he's going to keep writing like this, I'm not going to finish his book. Because it was almost like a switch that flipped. And I was like, the first half was so good. And like, there didn't feel like there was anything unnecessary. And then we got about halfway through and he was just throwing in random stuff that I'm like, this is not important to the story at all. And it's really asinine and it feels like you just let someone else write for two pages. It's, it was weird. My other issue with this book was the plateauing. And I don't know if it actually happened exactly at halfway, but there was a point where I was like, the stakes don't feel like they're there for me anymore. And I don't want to say too much about it um, because I don't want to give spoilers, but there was definitely a big moment where it was supposed to be like this big thing that happened. And I was like, but we've known that from the beginning. Like it was supposed to be kind of like this big reveal, this big moment. And I'm like, but that's been this, the whole, the thing. That's how it has been since the beginning. Like there was no reveal. There was no change. That's just how it's been the whole time. So the whole like thing that was driving the plot forward towards the end of the book just was like not doing it for me because I was like, I'm okay, but what else? Like, so that was specifically with the characters like we get we got to a point where the characters were supposed to be growing but i'm like but they've been that way from the whole the whole time there's nothing new about it so in the end it's just kind of about the plot and i enjoy the plot but i'm mostly a character driven reader so i did take issue with that i will say that this book did both make me cry and laugh out loud so that was well done on andy weir's part this was probably my favorite book of the month like I haven't really rated any books this month but I do think I would probably give this one a four maybe 4.25 stars so I didn't have any five star reads this month except for maybe Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats and War of the Worlds actually would be sitting around a similar rating I do think I liked Project Hail Mary a little bit better though and the last book I read in December, and I finished this, like, the day before New Year's Eve, was Norwegian by Night by Derek B. Miller. This book was weird for me. So this book was my Christmas Eve book exchange that Philo gave me. We exchange books every Christmas Eve. This is the one he got me this year. So this book is about a Jewish American man who's living with his daughter and her fiance or husband in Norway and one day he hears the upstairs neighbors fighting and a tragedy happens and he ends up running away with the kid who lives upstairs and from a mystery slash like suspense slash thriller I don't I don't really think it's supposed to be a mystery because you you as the reader know what's happening the whole time, but it is, I think, supposed to be suspenseful and thrilling. And as a mystery in suspense, or not a mystery, I keep saying that and that's not what it is. As a suspense slash thriller, I think it worked fine. There was way, way too much technical detail about the war. So this man is a veteran of the United States Marines and it comes up too often. And there's too much technical detail about the Korean War and just a lot of flashbacks to it that just were weird. Also, the fact that this man was Jewish was very important to the book, but also felt like it wasn't very important to the book because it's really drilled home so many times that this man is Jewish. But 
I don't know why they remind you every other page that this is a Jewish man. Like, I haven't forgotten. You don't need to tell me every other page. Especially because they would just throw it in. It would just be like a conversation about something else and they'd be like, don't forget he's Jewish. And they're like, what does him being Jewish have to do with the fact that he... whatever, you know? There were a couple times where there was some moments where him being Jewish was actually important. I don't know if it needed to be mentioned every other page. It's almost as if every time they talked about the character, they were like, this guy, his name, he's Jewish. This guy, his name, he's Jewish. I'm like, I get it. <laughs> I haven't forgotten. And I do think the author of this is Jewish. So I don't know if he was trying to make a commentary on that. And I just am not understanding because I'm not. And if, you know, if that's the case, hey, that's fine. It was weird to me that it was mentioned like every other page just so often. The other issue I had with this is there was a lot of racism and xenophobia in this book. And I think this is a case of the author trying to make it so the character is racist and xenophobic and the author maybe is not. But I don't think he handled it well. And especially because there's some out dated language. This book was written not that long ago, but some of it is flashbacks to the 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever. And there's some language used in those sections that would have been typical of that time that we wouldn't use today. And I don't really appreciate the language that was used. I don't think you need to use the derogatory language to get your time setting across. It is not necessary. There was one, like, for example, there was one part where they're talking briefly about San Francisco in, like, the 70s or something. And there's a comment made about all the interracial couples and, and the homosexuals. And, like, the phrasing of it is, like, very derogatory and sounds very demeaning and it's like I understand the point the language maybe didn't need to be that language and the same thing when describing black people in this book and Asian people in this book I understand why he was using the language he used but I don't think he needed to to get his point across and a lot of the word choices in here were poorly chosen and I personally would not use. So if the author had chosen some different words, I probably actually would have ended up enjoying this book a fair amount. But as it stands, I feel a little weird about it because I did enjoy the story and I did get really wrapped up in it but I did definitely have some issues. That was everything I read in December. Let me know what you were able to read during the month of December down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!